Hello my fellow chairs and welcome back to EU4. Today we're going to be playing as the nation of Chagatai as we attempt to restore the Ilkhanat, one of the descendants of Genghis Khan's great empire that uh, ruled, o ruled over uh, all of Persia. In order for us to do such a thing we just have to be part of the Altaic or Tatar uh, culture groups. We have to own the entire Persian region. And we have to have our capital over here as well. Now you may be asking yourself, well, Chairman, why are you going to be playing as Chagatai? Wouldn't Great Horde be a little bit better? I mean, yeah, they are a little bit closer to uh, Persia. Meanwhile, over here, I do have to go through like all of the Timurids to get over there. But I do like Chagatai um, because they do start out with a, with a subject. They also, I feel like, are a little bit in a better position to get to Persia just because... Uh, you just have to deal with the Timurids and their subjects. I mean, you know, their subjects are going to be breaking free very quickly at the start of the game. Yeah, I think also too is uh, aesthetic and perhaps the most important thing at E4 is it'll look better in terms of border, uh, you know, beautification and all that stuff. Without wasting any more time, let's get right into it as Chagatai. Okay, so first thing is Chagatai. Obviously, we start with about 15k guys. As I mentioned earlier, we have Yark and our subject here. Uh, with 6k guys, they are not a horde. They are a rigor emirate. Meanwhile, us, we are a horde step nomad nation. Uh, so yeah, we get access to the best early game CB, which is just simply show superiority over everybody, which is tribal conquest. And we're going to wait for these guys to start fracturing apart from the Timurids. What I'm also going to go ahead and do is rival Uzbek and the Oirat. I don't think that they'll or, you know, they'll probably end up allying each other. Oh, well. And in terms of allies, we can actually ally 12 different nations. I'll go ahead and ally Nagai. Send a royal marriage over here to Ajam, which I guess, never mind on that one. Uh, who can I royal marry? Yeah, we'll royal marry Kazan. Also, as a horde, we do not start out with feudalism. So I'm going to ask our ally Delhi, who is getting completely annihilated in the sort of hind war over here, to go ahead and give me some of that feudalism. All right, and then Shah Rukh of the Timurids is actually dead. They're at war with Ladakh over here. Uh, but now, yeah, all the subjects, they're all going to be ticked off at Timurids. So we're just going to wait until, you know, one of them declares their independence war. And we're going to hop right onto them. And actually, Timurids are at war with the Mamluks. Because, oh, the Mamluks are invading Dawasir, I'm assuming. All right, you know what? We're just going to go ahead and attack Transoceana. I'm tired of waiting. Uh, Timurids, they have less than 10k guys, so might as well take advantage of them while we can. And, uh, yeah, I don't, I mean, none of his subjects is really going to help him out. And, um, obviously, all their armies are probably over here. So, let's go on Nagai and let's do this. But I think, let me, let me just mark these as interests before I do that. Alright, finally, I got feudalism. I had to dev up my capital a couple of times, up to 15. Not just to rush it down since I am in this war. Luckily, I did, um, because these guys are all at Militech 4. Uh, Timurids have, like, no troops, by the way. Um, and I'm already, like, halfway there to getting to Militech 5, which is huge. For a Tier 2 government reform, we're just going to go with Martial Society. Extra manpower, always good. We're also going to see if we can't potentially save Nagai's army here. I don't think we'll be able to, but we'll be able to clean up uh, Transoceana's army. Uh, unfortunately, it was not a stack wipe, but I'll still take the dub. Okay, because this war was so brutal, because I had a ton of rebels to also deal with. Um, I'm completely out of manpower, so I'm only going to be able to take these three provinces, money and war reps. Which, I mean, it's technically a win, but it doesn't feel like a win at all. Oh, and Oirat just attacked me. I get why, because I only have 3k guys, but... They're fighting me and all my allies right now. I'm pretty much just letting my allies do all the work. I Again, I don't understand why Oirat would do this. Other than at the time I had 3k guys. I now have 7k and stuff. Obviously I need to get the cav up. But um, I mean like me and all my allies combined. Just straight up outnumber and out tech the Oirat. And now the Uzbek are attacking Oirat. Oh. Yeah, no, they, uh, where at you done goof? And now even Ming is invading them. Oh, that's wonderful. In this war with Oirat, we're just gonna do this. Take a little bit of extra money. Pretty much things I had cores on or 
or part of my states. We're just gonna let Uzbek and Ming just deal with these guys at that point. Tier three government reform. We're just gonna go with lip service, cheaper land maintenance. It was squeeze out a little bit of extra money, and uh, we're gonna start gearing up to go to war against the Uzbek, uh, who did lose their war against the Oirat. Oh man, yeah, stack wiping them. That's one thing I love about playing as hordes. Uh, you're able to just stack wipe so many armies, no matter what. Especially if you have your infantry cavalry ratio up there. Like, you know, I should have 85% cavalry. I have uh, 9 cav and 11 infantry, so pretty much there. And, um, yeah, we're able to fight so effectively. I was able to stack wipe all the Uzbeks guys, uh, great hordes guys, and got some mooks guys as well. So, uh, yeah, this war seemingly looked difficult, but honestly, it's pretty easy now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make uh, Great Horde actually break their alliance with Timurids, and Timurids will probably be our next target. Oh, and even better, because Transoceana declared their independence from Timurids. Timurids is fighting all their subjects, and uh, Great Horde, since I kicked their butt, they're no longer able to join that war, so that alliance is gone. I'm going to actually just do war reps with these guys, take some money from them, and uh, I'm just going to let my allies finish this war against the Uzbek, and uh, we're going to go ahead and immediately attack Transoceana while they're fighting for their independence. Alright, with Uzbek completely out of the way, now I can go back to what I really like doing as a horde. That's just burning everything down. And just because I'm crazy, Timurids have no troops whatsoever. They're also fighting the Mamluks in this war. So, uh, yeah, we're also going to attack them. Oh, and, uh, yeah, Timurids just got completely cut in half by, by both of these guys. Um, I mean, that works out for me anyways. All right, now we're looking pretty freaking good. Except for the fact my tribes are kind of upset, so let me do this first. All right, uh, after building up the free company, I can actually ally the Ottomans. So let's do that. It pretty much uh, secures my ability to do this for the rest of the game now i don't really have to worry about coalitions now because guess what i have the freaking ottoman and when i get over here to akwayunlu who is allied to the ottomans guess what i'll get them to break their alliance so i can take the one or however many provinces i need from them all right so i'm in this war with afghanistan uh while i'm doing this war i'm just going to start another war against Khorasan. i'm going to call nagai they're going to do most of the work Alright, this war with Coruscant is finally over. We're taking a huge chunk out of them. Uh, we're going to burn all this stuff to the ground, and then we're going to go ahead and attack Transoceana. I can also finally pick up my very first idea group, which, you know, I didn't really talk about Chagatai ideas, but we do get uh, 20 calf combat ability at the start. Harsh, tr uh, harsh treatment cost, minus 20%. Land maintenance, uh, land attrition and attrition for enemies, morale armies, manpower recovery speed, annexation cost of our subjects, prestige, core creation, diplomat, and more manpower. That being said, I do believe that horde ideas are probably going to be our best bet. Uh, they do sync up really well uh, with Chagatai ideas and obviously later on Ilkhanit. Uh, so yeah, we'll do this. Alternatively, I would also go for offensive ideas, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do horde. And uh, because we're well over 300 dev, I just caused a Nomadic Frontier event in Ming. So uh, Ming's going to explode soon enough. For Tier 4 government reform, we're just going to go with Tsubatai strategies. Tsubatai was like one of the greatest Mongol generals that have ever lived. Uh, this gives us a di or cheaper artillery cost and leader siege plus one. You know what? Ming decide to ally Timurids. Timurids are allying literally everybody they possibly can. I think it's time we attack Ming. We're going to call on our pal Delhi, and we're just going to make Timurids break their alliance with a bunch of people. And guess what? We're going to be taking as much money as we can from China. Okay, so this is the type of peace deal we're going to take. We're going to make them give a bunch of stuff back to Kazakh. We're going to take these two provinces, and we're going to take about 3,000 ducats. And we're just going to chill into our truce with uh, Coruscant's over in about a year, well, a couple months. Oh, apparently Ajam decided that they were going to form Persia. Yeah, no. Yeah, no, you're not going to be around for much longer, pal. All right, I'm going to go ahead and wage war against Persia because they're currently fighting Muscovy over Nagai. So 
you know, we're also on par military tech wise. I think we'll be able to handle them. Second idea group time, we're gonna go with either uh, trade or diplo. I'm thinking we'll actually do trade. Finally, this war with Persia is over. This one took quite a bit of time, but uh, yeah, we're getting about 100% peace deal with them. And now we're about to get, get into burning a lot of the really good provinces here. Alright, what I'm going to do right now is reset my truce with Persia, because our truce uh, ends with them in 1541. But I'm going to go ahead and attack their ally of Baluchistan, full annex Baluchistan, and white piece out Persia. That's going to give us like a five year truce. Alright, I'm going to do another war against Persia, but this time I'm going to call on both the Ottomans and Aquayunlu. Uh, Ottomans just finished up a war against the Venetians, so they got to walk all the way over here, but... Um, this honestly works out perfectly. Alright, that war was pretty easy. I actually got Mamluks to break their alliance with both Ormuz and Persia. So we're going to take this course, as I mentioned earlier. Just continue to burn all this down. Get the Monarch points. Make it easier to core. And it keeps our nation from uh, completely just collapsing with uh, lack of Horde unity. Alright, I'm going to start a war against Muscovy. Obviously calling in both Ottomans and Aquayunlu. Uh, this is just so I could clean up my borders a bit and kick them out of the Middle East. So I started a war against Ormuz here. Uh, I did build a little bit of a navy here to kind of help me out. Potentially land on the island of Ormuz, which I, interestingly enough is not their capital. Actually their capital is down here. Um, I might actually not need to land on the Ormuz if I just simply occupy this area here. But uh, yeah, I did call on the Ottomans for this war, just so then that way I could use their Islets Navy. Okay, Ottomans, they occupied all of Yas and Hadramut, so I can actually take these two provinces, along with no money. Lovely, but regardless, I now own these two, and I don't have to fight Ormuz ever again. Unless they ally somebody like Persia. I'm also going to go ahead and launch an invasion of Persia. I'm going to call my pal the Ottomans to help me out in this war. They're going to do most of the work, and I'm going to try and cut Persia off from Azam. So I'm going to try and take all the border provinces away from them. I also see Russia actually owns this province right here. Uh, so yeah, we're going to try and cut Aquayunlu away uh, from Persia. Okay, so I can actually finish up this war. Uh, pretty much taking all the provinces I want, aside from like one here. I mean, if I give it like one more month, uh, we will be able to actually get like a 100% war score. Yep. Uh, but the Ottomans actually own this province here because I forgot to make it province of interest. But we can pretty much almost completely isolate these guys. Let's go ahead and do that. And now they're in like three locations. Good optimal border gore. And let's go ahead and start burning all this stuff to the ground. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to get the Ottomans to actually break their alliance with AQ here. Uh, so they actually become a little bit more hostile towards them. And I'm going to set the rest of the Persian region as provinces of interest. Just so then that way, uh, you know, me and the Ottomans, we have a mutual understanding of who wants what. I can finally embrace this colonialism thing and guess what, now I could get tech. And we have guns now. That's right, the Mongols have gun. Also just became the seventh greatest power in the world because I have 665 development so that's fantastic. Also gonna sell uh, colonialism to John Purr because six ducats sounds good to me. Also gonna go ahead and begin our integration of Yarkan so obviously I'm gonna improve relations with them. We're gonna integrate them, clean up these borders a bit more. Uh, but pretty much I'm waiting for my peace or my truce with AQ or Persia to be over so we can finish up this campaign. Time to attack AQ. We're going to call on the Ottomans. And guess what? Russia won't be able to join because they have just as much debt as your average American. So let's go ahead and attack these bad boys. All I'm taking from AQ are just these three provinces. It's going to set up a truce with the Ottomans. And I'm going to take a lot of their money. I'm okay with that. Maybe we'll come back in a few years. You never know, maybe I'll do a part 2 of this series. Yeah, if that's the case, maybe I will take out all AQ. Oh, I mean, Ottomans want to attack Russia? Okay, yeah, I'm cool with that. As long as I get one province, I'm, I really don't mind. 
All right, and, and seeing that we actually are making some sort of semblance of money now, uh, we're actually going to go ahead and start reinvesting a lot of that money back into our land. Because uh, we kind of sort of need an economy. All right, and because we've been lacking behind so much in admin, we finally got to admin tech 10, and we can finally choose our third idea group, which I'm thinking is either going to be administrative or religious ideas. I did mention the possibility of us becoming Vajrayana, at some point so i am extremely tempted to do just that obviously you know i have to core up a lot of this stuff because uh you know it's it's more valuable than all this crap over here but um so i mean obviously that's going to contribute towards our total gov cap and obviously that would make me a lot stronger but to be honest with you i really really like the sound of Buddhist Ilkhanat, just to go all in on bringing back uh, the true, you know, Ilkhanat nation. All right, I'm thinking we're gonna do a quick war against Persia right now. We're gonna just call in Delhi. I would just wait till the Ottomans are done, but they're probably gonna be at war for a while. I'm gonna go ahead and attack them, wipe out this army, and then move up north to wipe out that other army. Now, once we full occupy Persia, then I'll fo focus on Kazakh. Okay, and. We are so close to being able to just full annex Persia and call this a day, but Persia is now reduced down to an OPM. As you may notice, also, I can enact my final government reform, but I'm not going to do that just yet. And the reason being, in order for us to actually form the Ilkhanat, by the way, you won't see this reform until you actually move your capital over here into Persia. Uh, we have to be a horde. Uh, it doesn't say it here, but we do have to remain a step horde in order to even have this, this this decision. And all we have to do is own the province of Shiraz, and we can actually form the Ilkhanat. And we have officially integrated my subject of Yarkand. Now, what I will do is I am going to go ahead and state up this one area here, because there is a gold mine, and obviously we will develop that area. Uh, but I will concentrate development out of all the other areas I can from my subject. Oh, I mean, sure, yeah, we could do this war really fast. Okay, Ottomans, let's let's do it. Yeah, we could we could be at war with Russia. I don't mind. That's okay. Okay, so our truce with Persia is over. As you guys can see, I'm also at war with Hassa. That's an Ottoman thing. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and attack Persia while we're doing this. Take the province of Shiraz, and that honestly should do it. John Purr will probably annihilate Gujarat, Delhi will help out, and then uh, we'll be able to form the Ilkhanate. And I'm, I'm pretty close actually to getting Vajrayana uh, rebels to spawn up in this province here. If you're not familiar on how to do just that, uh, you just send a missionary there and then you just bring your missionary maintenance all the way down. And then uh, yeah, it's actually pretty easy to go from there. But anyways, uh, we're going to go ahead and attack Persia. And here we go, full annexing of Persia. Uh, obviously, we're going to burn this down one last time. And now I can actually form the Ilkhanate. Let's do that. Perfect. And yeah, we're this nice orange color, I guess. Uh, orange tan. I don't I don't know. We're, we're, we're a nice color. <laughs> Apparently, I took over couple subjects from Persia because they had a uh, what what should I call it the uh, the Persian spheres apparently they just straight up were became my subjects I mean that that's cool why not right on and uh, yeah we'll pour this they kind of ideas are pretty solid they're not amazing they're not as good as the great Yuan or the Golden Horde or even Qing ideas but it is just kind of fun to go ahead and form this nation. So, Ilkhanat Ideas, you get cheaper cav, cavalry combat ability, plus 20%, and your finisher is the cavalry flanking ability, which is really nice. You get your really horde, unity, or legitimacy, whatever it is. Talents of heretics, max for one of cultures, which is actually very nice because there are a ton of cultures over here. Envoy travel time and movement speed. The movement speed, just like the Yuan Ideas, is very underrated. It allows you to get into battle faster and to get out of battle a lot faster. Years of Separatism is very nice. The minus 5 attack cost is also good and the land fire damage plus 10% is also very good. I don't believe we are an empire. 
Yeah, we are not an empire. And uh, just because we went and went ahead and formed the Ilkhanat, I'm actually going to reform into a monarchy because, uh, you know, this is going to change us out of our horde units. The Muslim units are, at this point in the game, starting to just become way better than our current ones. We are going to go ahead and become an Ikta. We're also going to do uh, strength and noble privileges and all that stuff. And we're about to lose our tribal estate. I'm okay with that. Apparently order's been restored in the Ming because I forgot, you know, we're no longer a horde. So now, uh, yeah, they're they're stable again. And finally, we got our Vajrayana uh, zealots. So yeah, they're going to go around and start converting all the provinces for me. And uh, once I can become Vajrayana, we'll go ahead and start converting everything myself. We also uh, have a great project over here in Bamyan, which is actually pretty good. Uh, it's the Buddha statues, and when it's maxed out, you get an additional missionary, missionary strength, idea cost, and culture conversion cost. And all you have to do is just be Buddhist. Fourth idea group time. We're just going to go with quality ideas. Or actually, offensive ideas, probably a little bit better. So we'll do that. Okay, after being plunged into a couple wars and my allies keep killing my Vajrayana separatists, or my zealots, I think now we're actually going to be able to do this. So, fingers crossed, nobody calls me into another war. I even disabled the call to arms option with all my allies. I really don't want to do any more wars until we convert to Buddhas. Oh my god, the Ottomans are like collapsing hard right now. They hit 300,000 troops at one point, they're below 120. Oh my. Also, look at that song high. Now that's a big song high. And now the Ottomans are going to attack. I'm sorry, Ottomans, but no. Finally, we are Vajrayana. Oh, their Ottomans also got attacked by Austria. Our nation collapsed. Take mandate. Oh yeah, that's right. Now we can actually take the mandate of heaven away from the uh, Ming. But yeah, more importantly, we are Vajrayana. Is fantastic because now I can bump up my missionary strength and we can go straight into converting everything. Okay, so I think that's where we're going to leave it off for today. Uh, we, As I mentioned earlier, we did become Vajrayana. We're slowly watching the Ottomans just collapse. It's less than 40,000 troops. They're at war with uh, pretty much all their neighbors right now. And um, yeah, we are the... I mean, we would be the 8th greatest power in the game, but Bob Manas is ahead of us because of the institution. But I uh, hope you guys really enjoyed this video. If you did and would like to see me play as some more nations that are uh, that start out as step nomads, such as the Oirat, and go on to form my favorite formable in the entire game, which is Yuan, and then go on to form the Mongol Empire, make sure you check out this video here where I start make sure you go ahead and check out this video and if you just want to check out more of my content some unarrayed nations and or some videos where I complete mission trees in their entirety make sure you check out that stuff as well I'll see you guys in the next one chairman out